the 1035 exchange. So this is a good option to be aware of if I have a cash value life insurance policy that wasn't set up right, it's not performing, something's wrong with it, it doesn't fit my needs anymore, and I'm considering a new one, what am I gonna do with the old one? Well, a 1035 exchange is an option. We're gonna provide some detail as far as to what it is, how it works, and some pros and cons to it. So what it is, the 1035 exchange transaction allows me to take the cash value from one life insurance policy, the net cash value, so with the whole life, it's my cash value. If I'm moving it from a universal life policy, it is the surrender value. I can roll it over or transfer it to a new cash value policy. Now, the nice thing about it is that the, the transfer in itself is tax-free. So if I have a gain on the policy and I were to withdraw it, there would be taxes on the gains. This is a nice way in which I can roll it over or transfer it completely tax-free. The transaction itself will allow for a cash value life insurance policy to be transferred to another life insurance policy or to an annuity. So next, a couple bullet points here. What I like about it is it does allow for one to infuse a large amount of PUAs into a policy right off the bat. There we go. <laughs> and we've got an exception to the base premium and PUA limits. So we, we often talk about, you hear me say all the time, this 1090 split, or if we use one of the major mutual companies, wherever I set my minimum base premium, I can pay 10X that into PUAs per year. And some companies will cap me, cap me out at that, some won't, depends on the insurance company. With that said, a 1035 exchange is a great way to exceed those limits. So a company may 10X me, or, or limit me at 10X my base premium into PUAs, but then if I have a large 1035 exchange, that could be an additional 10X or 100X. Now it does depend on the company. Some have limits on 1035s, whether it is a total dollar amount, or if it's a limit, the base premium might only be able to go as low as 5% could be a number of things. That's more company material we want to be aware of. But what we have is a large PUA infusion, exception to the base premium and PUA limits. And then some nice bullet points here. We see that the 1035 exchange can cover the base premium in year one. And what that means is I can, in effect, as a policyholder, have a zero out of pocket. Meaning, if I'm rolling over, $50,000 or $500,000 from an old, old policy, I don't have to pay the premium at all in the first year. I can have the transfer go into PUAs, but before it does that, cover the base premium and then the excess goes into PUAs. Depending on the situation and what my needs are, how, how I'm looking to set up a policy, we could potentially have zero out of pocket indefinitely. We've seen this in cases where we always present it, and a lot of times a policyholder, I can decide to execute one thing and then change my mind and adjust my course as time passes. But you can, you're gonna see an example of this as well in the next video, have a 1035 exchange in which I roll everything over, pay nothing the first year and pay nothing thereafter, and the cash value continues to appreciate quite nicely, if I might add as well. So a lot of benefits to a 1035 exchange that, are, that we want to be aware of. Now, before we consider this, it is important to analyze the old policy and ask the question or review it, is it beyond the first two years, regardless of the insurance company? Because if it is, money can go where in a policy, premium or PUAs? What is the worst part about any life insurance policy in respect to the cash value, the first couple of years, year one and year two, the insurance company takes that base premium and they overcharge me for the cost of insurance upfront. Why that's important to mention here is if I am rolling a policy over, even if it's within the first two years, but especially beyond, base premium dollars I pay into the old policy come back to cash value. I'm giving that up Opening a new policy, yes, I've got the cash value enhancement with a 1035 exchange, but at the same time, 
I'm starting a new policy and I have to go through those insurance expenses again. Whereas the old policy, if I'm over them, the expenses, the first and second year, I'm beyond the expenses. I don't have to worry about them as much anymore. So I can, I'm really starting to get into the sweet spot. It is important to look at that regardless of the company. Another question, is improvement possible? Depending on the company I selected in my MEC limit, can I make tweaks to add more money into PUAs, adjust my base premium? Can I do a face amount redu reduction to allocate less money towards base premium, more toward PUAs? You can do that kind of stuff with existing policies. We've got to make sure it doesn't mech and all that good stuff, but you can make changes. A lot of times one is not aware of that. They're only presented at 1035 exchange because it's most lucrative for the agent selling the new policy. But the point here is we want to weigh out both options rather than just say, old one stinks, let's go with the new one. Slow down. Can I make it an improvement? And if I do, will that yield me more money with the old policy than the strategy with the new one. Because this is our money in a policy we're talking about. We don't want to just throw it out the window. So things to look at or reasons why a 1035, where a 1035 may be appropriate. Poor performance, poor design, doesn't fit needs anymore. And there can be a number of other reasons. But Again, what we like to do here is analyze the old policy. If it makes sense to keep it, looking at the guarantees and not guarantees, if it makes sense to keep it, keep it and see what tweaks we can make. If it makes sense to roll it over, see, okay, we can roll it over. How much does that hurt in the, be in the beginning when we actually make that transfer? Because we've got to overcome the break even again, overcome the early insurance expenses. Yes, long term, this will look great. If I wanted more flexibility in a larger company, this looks great. But these are items I want to be aware of up front to prevent any chance of buyer's remorse. That's what we're trying to make sure we prevent. So know this is a lot of information. Our next video will cover some numbers around the 1035 exchange. Hopefully you found this helpful. More to come. Hey guys, Steve Parisi here. If you enjoyed the content you just saw, please subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell for future videos. If you'd like more information or to see some custom policies for yourself, feel free to call or email our offices at the contact information below.